see you as always and we are delighted this morning to have Pastor John Swires with us. Uh, John really needs no introduction but I wanted to tell you something that he likely would not uh, tell you that is 56 years ago yesterday he was ordained to the ministry wow. so we celebrate I 
I did not want to let that uh, go with, uh, unnoticed this morning. We are delighted that you are here. And Pastor Swires, we're delighted you are leading us. Please come and lead us in worship. Thank you very much. Uh, the 57th year has started out with a bang. <laughs> and obviously I'm leading worship this morning. Uh, but leading worship at St. Timothy is, it's a little bit different than it is elsewhere because I'm among friends. Thank you. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. Please become centered as we prepare to confess our sins together. <clears throat> Please stand if you are able and face the baptismal font. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus who bears the cross, the Spirit who makes our joy complete. Amen. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sins. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others, for the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us. For the unjust demands we place on others and your creation, forgive us for the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor forgive us lead us back to you and set us on the right path in the name of jesus christ our savior amen
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit is with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you show perpetual loving kindness to us, your servants. Because we cannot rely on our own abilities, grant us your merciful judgment and train us to embody the generosity of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Jonah. When God saw that the people of Nirvana did how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the committee he, that he said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, it is not new that you are a gracious God and merciful, show to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and ready to live. And the Lord said, it, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down and east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see he when dawn came on the next day. God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, you are concerned about the bush. And you are concerned about the bush which you did not labor in, which you did not grow. It came into being in the night and perished in the night. And should I not be concerned about Nirvana, the great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their hand from their left and also many animals? Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Exalt you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. There is no end to your greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another, and shall declare your power. I will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and 
and all your marvelous works. Publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing joyfully of your righteousness. from Philippians. For to me living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart her be with Christ, for her that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you, since I am convinced of this. I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind and for the faith of the gospel. And and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them is evidence of their destruction, but your, of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you privilege that not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. Since you are having the same struggle that you saw, I had and now hear that I still have. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
The twentieth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. The kingdom of heaven is like a landover, landowner, who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the work marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever's right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? Say said to him, because no one has hired us. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired around five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. <coughs> now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage, take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give you to this last, the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. 
a prayer of thanksgiving from the movie Shenandoah. And James Stewart was the star. And the prayer which he prayed goes like this. We cooked the harvest. It wouldn't be here, and we wouldn't be eating it if we hadn't done it all ourselves. We worked dog bone hard for every crumb and every morsel. But we thank you, Lord, just the same for the food we're about to eat. Amen. <laughs> Not what you call really good theology, and yet, you know, we laugh at it because there's some satire to it. It kind of pokes fun at the pioneer spirit, and we get a kick out of that as, as we listen to that just kind of put out there before us. Of course, to put it simply, what the prayer is doing is putting human beings and achievement at the engine and locomotive of a train, and it's putting God at the caboose. And that's not too cool. And we can kind of laugh about it in the movie of Shenandoah, and I don't know the exact plot of the film, but I'm sure uh, the good people went out at the end and the bad people didn't, but that's another story. But the reality is that sometimes we get to thinking like the prayer speaks in our own heads and in our own minds. The Gospel and the Old Testament lesson both leave us with a sense of discomfort today. It's not that everything ends happily. It does not. There is still conflict at the end of the lessons. We all know the story of Jonah, and it seems totally far out. And in some ways, it really is. I mean, the events of that story are just just so far out that it, it just blows our minds. But, and this is the intention of the writer, the story causes us to really think about what is real and what is not, and what life is all about, and what it may not be all about. Jonah is called to prophesy to the people of Nineveh. He doesn't like those folks very much, so he books passage on a ship to Tarshish, which is in the opposite direction. And we all know how the story goes. The storm comes up. Jonah doesn't even dive into the water himself. He gets other people to throw him in the water. And then the fish swallows him and uh, carries him to the destination which God uh, thought that Jonah ought to be going all along. And uh, let's say he fish discharges him. <laughs> and then we see Jonah go into the city and you say, repent. One sentence. Mad angry and the people repent and even the animals were told are laid out in sackcloth Woo! and then the anger 
you're still angry. Oh, yeah, I'm so angry I could die. And then, going outside the city, sitting down, and then the bit with the plant and the worm. And Jonah is still mad. In fact, he's doubly mad when the worm undoes the plant and he's left in the bare sunshine. And so, you know, the bottom line is, you know, Jonah, can't you look beyond yourself implied? Can't you see that there's more to life than just you? Duh. There are 300,000 people in Nineveh. And they're saved. Don't you understand? And the whole thing ends. Our gospel for the day is equally disconcerting. I don't think uh, the gospel really portrays the kind of contract that the United Auto Workers are looking for now. <laughs> but we see the vineyard owner going in to the marketplace. And he hires folks early in the morning. And then at 9 o'clock, and then noon o'clock, and then 3 o'clock, and then 5 o'clock, and into the evening. He hires about five shifts. And then the bottom line is, everybody gets paid the same thing. And again, it ends with a question. It's mine. Can't I be generous with what I choose to be generous about? Or are you envious? And then the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. God suggests in our scriptures for the morning and in a lot of other places too. A new way of approaching things. A new set of lenses through which we are to see. Or we are invited to see. Let me put it that way. We need to look beyond ourselves to see the common good. We need to look toward other people and other folks to help us to build community. It's not easily done because we have to take the me out of the picture and put the us in the picture and then the whole movement of community and body comes into play. I received this week in the mail a magazine which I receive semi-annually or annually from my alma mater, Gettysburg College, which has uh, Lutheran heritage. And there was an article in there entitled, How the Impossible Becomes possible? And the answer is one which is perpetually before us. 
But the answer is, in essence, think beyond yourself and toward the community of which you are part and seek to be yourself and yet blend into the community to see a greater whole. The college doesn't let you fade into the background or fall through the cracks, the author says. The environment, from our athletic teams to the classrooms, and the people, from the professors to our cafeteria workers, all work together within our interwoven community to make sure everyone does well and that you build the skills to do well after your own graduation. You don't get that in many places, said Coleman. The college community is a big team. And then, and I'm not putting Gettysburg up as the be all, end all. You know, there's that little envelope that's right in the middle of all this stuff that invites you to uh, part with stuff from your wallet. But it seems to me that it portrays a lifestyle and a vision which is worth pursuing. In addition, Gettysburg talks about a program of guided pathways in which incoming students have an academic advisor, a co-curricular advisor who helps them identify extra activities, curricular activities in which they might participate, and a career path advisor. When I graduated there many, many years ago, the campus was a friendly place, but it did not have that sense of community. I went in, I saw my advisor for five minutes a year, and then I went through the registration line and kind of picked out courses that might suit me. And, uh, you know, by the grace of God, I'm standing here. But I think of the opportunity to grow beyond ourselves and to community. And certainly, I don't think you're all here just because the air conditioning is nice. You're here this morning to learn and grow individually and to learn and grow into community into seeking to do more than you could do individually with the common good. Pastor Jennifer, in talking with me, has said that in this troubled world, where there's a lot of polarization and a lot of trouble, and you all read the headlines, so I don't have to go into any of that stuff. But she says, here is St. Timothy, a beacon of hope to the community. St. Paul really puts it very neatly in our second lesson for this morning. Now, St. Paul's world was as troubled as the world of Jonah and is trouble of the world as the world of the laborers. And when he wrote this particular passage to the Philippians, he was in prison and he was on death row. 
And I could tell you a little bit about that, but we won't go there. I was in prison chaplaincy for 31 years. Enough said. So St. Paul was in a difficult situation. He didn't know when he would be led from his cell and experience the last moments of his life. But the thing is that he is really not by himself, even though he is distant from them. He is part of the Philippian community, and he writes with passion to them, hoping against hope that he will somehow be with them again. And we look at the other letters of Paul also, and we see in the midst of adversity, in the midst of suffering, in the midst of rough times, in the midst of polarization, God is there in the midst. He says to the Philippians, only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. So that whether I come and see you or I'm absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in the spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel. My prayer is, may it be so for us. Amen. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. grateful for the blessing of community, challenge your church to choose equity and compassion over judgment. God who sends the wind and the sun, you know every worm and bush by name. Help us remember that even the humblest parts of creation are precious to you. Show us how best to care for the earth and its creatures. God who is ready to relent from punishing, impart your compassionate wisdom to legislators, judges, members of the military, and law enforcement. Give them courage to serve their communities in times of uncertainty, stress, or exhaustion. tempted by evil ways. Protect your children from calamity and despair. Strengthen all who are incarcerated. Encourage all who are in despair or pain of any kind, especially Holly, Marianne. Strength to forgive because we have been forgiven. St. Andrew Lutheran Church Franklin, Pastor David Hood, and Pastor Matt Steinhauer. Mark, Sandy, Ed, Linda, Sally, Terry, Claude, David, Paul, Charlene, Ted, Sherry, Karen, Richard, Jane, David, Evelyn, Sandra, Fred, Carol, Scott, Joanne, Steve, Elaine, Sue Ellen, Marion, Deborah, Ginny. And all those we name aloud now or in the silence of our hearts. The assembly is invited at this time to present other petitions. Caregivers. 
We give thanks for the saints who died in faith. Show us how to live faithfully, creatively, and lovingly in your church and the world. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our heart, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace with one another. Peace.
belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life, and fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor are yours. Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, 
both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus invites you to this table. Come, eat, and live.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word. Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts, strengthened by this food, send us together the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Announcements. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I wanted to take the opportunity to talk about something that we've, we've been able to do as, as a church recently. I'm, I'm a little excited about this because we can, it's another opportunity for, or, or a different way that you can contribute to the church uh, finances. Um, we have actually created what's called a nonprofit brokerage account. And what that allow us to do or allow you to do is transfer stocks and, and other assets directly into the church uh, and in a possibly tax advantageous way for you. Uh, so there are, there are some, some ways to do that that would make sense, especially for those of you that are in the situation where you have maybe have uh, required minimum distributions uh, at the end of the year. Uh, so there's some opportunities there that, um, that I think will, will, will make sense for a lot of people. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a good way to transfer those, those assets and we can talk about it afterwards if you have any questions. But uh, I think it's a, a good way to uh, take advantage of, of uh, like I say, a, a tax uh, situation that, that may be beneficial for you. And if you have any questions, I'll, be, I'll hang around a little bit and we can talk a little bit later, but uh, I wanted to make sure everybody was aware. Thank you. In terms of announcements, there are two headings that I would call your attention to, and you can read them in detail. Sign up to be a greeter, and mark your calendars for St. Timothy's Oktoberfest celebration, which is Saturday, October 21st, in Founders Hall. I think our tickets are going to be on sale today after the service. No way. Any other, any other announcements for the benefit of the body? If not, please stand for the blessing. The God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
at work in you. Thanks be to God.